All right, my fellow English teachers of rhetorical analysis, I have yet another hammer and home the thesis writing workshop for you in which I use classic commercials to solidify writing introductions for rhetorical analysis, which happens to be FRQ2 on the AP Lang and Composition exam. And in today's, I'm spotlighting the commercial Coca-Cola Keeps You Thin from 1961 that featured Connie Clausen. So, as a prefatory aside, it was important for me to explain who Connie Clausen is in a historical context with kids prior to showing them this video. So that's just kind of one little caveat to this is that I don't assume most, you know, 16 year olds know who Connie Clausen is uh, in this day and age. So I did need to uh, kind of unpack that a little bit. So in this writing workshop, I'm going to stick to status quo. And we're basically going to review how my template of the declarative thesis can be used every single time a student approaches to do a rhetorical analysis essay. So I'll unpack the template from top to bottom and we will will Bob Ross how to do the introduction three to four times for you so that it's nicely demystified for you and your students. So note that in order to get my students to write at the caliber that you're going to see in just a second, that it required a lot of Bob Rossing on my behalf. And I'm that guy that's always peddling the following question. What if we taught composition like Bob Ross teaches painting? It's kind of a goofy question, but it's got serious pedagogical implications. There's a fundamental difference, huge fundamental difference between the difference of assigning writing and the expl explicit direct teaching of it. So what I do when I teach teach writing is I use templates just like Bob Ross did. He always used the, he called it a heuristic. He used the heuristic of the wet on wet technique. And for me, no matter the expository mode, my students either declare or invert the thesis for the purposes of, you know, getting the introductory paragraph out of the way. And then all body paragraphs are written syllogistically within the syllogistic construct of premise, premise, conclusion. And that's true not only for rhetorical analysis, it's the get all for literary analysis, argument, persuasion, synthesis, and even research. And there's tons of content in my YouTube channel to uh, for you to delve into that kind of stuff if that's the angle you want to go. So the immediate question is this, how do I construct the introductory paragraph? And my students know that you have two options, you can declare or invert. But here's the kicker, rhetorical analysis. I always advise my students for simplicity's sake, especially for AP language, given that it's a timed exam, you know, it's a very grueling timed exam three essays in two hours. I always advise them to simplify and just declare. I find that declarative introductions for the purposes of performing rhetorical analysis are far more skilled and concise than the inverted. I find that when students invert for rhetorical analysis, sometimes it reads like a cliff note summation or like a paraphrase of whatever it is that they're addressing. So strictly declarative, and I'll, uh, I'll show you the inverted just to, to tease it a little bit. So here's the kicker too. In every prompt that I've seen for rhetorical analysis in the history of the college board, there's like a cheat or a, a, a hack within, within the prompt. And if students know this, they can pretty much guarantee themselves the thesis point if they ascertain the meaning of the text properly, correctly. Implicit in every prompt are two questions. What is the authorial intent and how does the author construct meaning? So in my template of the declarative and inverted thesis, students always write four sentences for the introduction. So an introduction is four sentences if you are using my template. What my students do is this. They know that when they answer the question, how does the author construct meaning, that that will constitute the thesis statement. So what my students do is they answer that question first in rhetorical analysis, hence a declarative thesis. You're dropping your thesis first. So they take three sentences to get anchored in the question, how does the author construct meaning? And given that it's three sentences, I tell them to focus on the three most salient terms, devices, techniques 
in the passage that's up for analysis. So focus on the three most germane, salient, relevant terms, devices, techniques in the rhetorical piece. And then one sentence where they focus on authorial intent. That's the absolute opposite way that we go for literary analysis. So in my class, what I have is a little poster that looks like this. And the, each term device uh, it has, has Velcro on it. And as we encounter terms, devices, techniques, we add it to our poster. And when we read passages or view commercials like this, what we do is remove the terms, devices, techniques from the poster and we put it onto our easel and we identify the three or four most important things within the commercial, the letter, the speech, whatever it is that we're analyzing. So that's what we did for this commercial. We had a like a quick Socratic seminar about it, just debriefed it, kind of contextualized it, made sure that we were all reading it correctly and that our eyeballs had spotted all the important things within it in terms of the construction of meaning and the authorial intent. So the declarative, as I've alluded to, is this. You begin with the thesis. How does the author construct meaning? And you're going to focus on three, sometimes it's four, but typically three of the most salient terms, devices, techniques. By extension of that, you're going to sprinkle in a little bit of context and background, but make sure you're not getting plot summative, right? The idea is not to regurgitate some recitation of what you saw and retell the story of what you saw in the commercial. So avoid that. Tier two vocabulary is important. This is an academic paper. It's an academic uh, you know, execution. So by tier two, I mean your average run of the mill SAT level cal caliber words. Uh, don't overdo it. The idea is not that if you use a million, million dollar words that you're doing the equivalent of good writing. You have to cop a certain diction. It has to be elevated, but don't overdo it. Stay in your wheelhouse. And even sometimes I tell my guys, less so in rhetorical analysis than the other expository modes, in terms of getting that unicorn of the sophistication point, I really think it bodes well when kids can use a little bit of colloquial and vernacular with that tier two in like a nice teeter-totter effect. It bodes well for them. Sentence constructs. My students are well-versed in Strunken White's rule number 18, which comes out of their seminal text called Write It Right. Rule number 18 makes the assertion that there's 12 different ways to cobble together a single sentence. So in terms of achieving voice, rhythm, and flow, again, chasing that unicorn of the sophistication point, you should see my students manipulate their syntax with purpose and effect. And as I've already mentioned, four sentences. So the inverted, I'm going to skip. Uh, this is what we use for literary analysis. And then in terms of argument, persuasion, synthesis, and research, it's a 50-50 coin flip. You can either declare or invert. And I have a ton of stuff in my YouTube channel that you can dive into if you would like to explore how the templates work across the modes. So let's take a look at three samples here. Again, we're going to try to do the three plus one paradigm. Three construction of meaning, one authorial intent. So look how this goes here. Drawing upon the celebrity of Connie Clausen, a quintessential symbol of what it means to be a woman within the era, Coke plays upon the societal expectations of keeping up with gender expectations. To be thin, sexy, and domestically dutiful is tantamount to true womanhood. Pulling at the heartstrings of women trying to keep up with the Joneses, Coke makes a rather bold promise. Its sugar-laden product can trim a waistline. In terms of its logic and rationale, Coke is the one product to help ensure that women satisfactorily fulfill their every role to society and man. So that's the three plus one, but let's break it down. My students are very good at implying their terms, devices, techniques. I think it's more artful to do that than to be so explicit in saying ethos, pathos, logo, syntax, tone, diction. Right? That's a little too dutiful and... Um, I don't know, elementary when students do that. So I, I, I love implication more than uh, being explicit most of the time, you know. So in the, in the first sentence here, drawing upon the celebrity of Connie Clausen, you're implying ethos. 
a quintessential symbol of what it means to be a woman within the era. So you're also getting at the logos or the thematic principles here that this Coca-Cola commercial is playing on the notion of gender spheres, that at the airing of this commercial, spheres were clearly delineated in terms of what it meant to be a man and what it meant to be a woman. And Coke is, you know, targeting women and saying, hey, if you want to be a perfect housewife and also have sex appeal, then this Coke product can help you with both. And that's the logos. And down here it says, in terms of its logic and rationale, that's the logos, right? And then where it says, pulling at the heartstrings of women, that's the pathos. So again, you don't need to directly state the terms. I think it's better when students do not. But you can see here, this student has focused on the three most salient or germane terms, and they've also got the authorial intent, which is like the thematic basis, the exigence of the piece. Four sentences, vocab is up. This has really nice vocab in it, like quintessential uh, societal expectations, gender expectations, domestically dutiful, tantamount, right? So good words, but the kid is in his wheelhouse. You know, it doesn't sound too goonish or contrived or pretentious, but it's up there because rhetorical analysis, I think out of all the expository modes is the one that invites us to geek out the most. So let's see what student number two does in terms of the three plus one template of the declarative thesis. Seemingly a small ask, women of the era have two responsibilities are if they are in fact to be a woman, have sex appeal and fulfill one's domestic obligations. So that's right at the logos, right? So it's kind of written like a syllogism. Coke, according to their logic, is the one panacea to ensure the fulfillment of both duties. Placing Connie Clausen, so now we're in the ethos, the token of American femininity as the spokesperson is intentional. The message is clear. Women who drink this product are not merely honoring the obligations wrought by clearly defined gender roles, but they will unquestionably be sexy for their man. And that, again, is three plus one. So you see the implication of the three terms, devices, techniques. You just need one fell swooping sentence for the authorial intent. So again, heavy concentration on construction of meaning, three plus one, one sentence authorial intent. Vocabs up, sentence structures are really good. Like, you know, my students are pretty good at uh, using semicolons, colons, dashes. We do learn all this from the Strunk and White book in my Nuance Academy, Word Study Academy. So it's explicitly taught. Everything's got to be Bob Ross in order to make the magic happen. So this has really good voice rhythm and flow as the first. And I think any college board reader would stop at this paragraph, scratch their chin and say, hmm, this kid can write. Both of these kids got some serious chops and if they can sustain this in the rest of their paper, I am unquestionably going to grant them the sophistication point. But it's got to hold steady for the whole paper, right? It's not just, uh, you know, the art of the introduction. It's got to be sustained throughout the entire paper. Student number three steps to the plate and ask the question, so how do I write an introductory paragraph? They're going to declare the thesis, use the declarative template, three plus one. Sentence structures, tier two, here we go. Borrowing the ethos of America's sexiest housewife, Coke designates Connie Clausen to deliver its message. Within the era that this commercial aired, gender roles were clearly delineated, especially with regards to what it means to be a woman. If women possess these two traits, they earn their place on the mantle of being transcendent, thin, and domestic. Coke, perhaps ironically, purports that their product can render such a transformation for any woman who so desires. And again, I love the implication. This student directly stated ethos, and I'll leave that to you. You know, you're the teacher, you're calling the shots in your classroom. If you want your students to be as explicit as this, by all means do it. Um, I, I, I'm fine either way. Uh, borrowing the ethos of America's sexiest housewife is nicely phrased, even though it's explicit. I like the wordings, and I don't think the kid's going to get penalized uh, for being explicit at all. Uh, I just find that when kids are overly explicit, it's very methodic and dutiful and sounds rather... 
uh, elementary in nature versus the kids that can imply. So again, four sentences, tier two sentence constructs, three plus one. So you can do that every single time. So that brings us to the close of this writing workshop video. Know that I have many uh, commercials that I've used to practice introductions for rhetorical analysis. They're on my YouTube channel. And what I've done for simplicity's sake is I've grouped them in series of fives. So this particular writing workshop is tied to the Nolan Cheese. Uh, the Folgers, uh, Harry and his wife, Guinness Wheelchair, and Six Fingers. They're all in my YouTube channel, and you can download all five slides uh, together. Also note that I do offer a lot of professional development opportunities for teachers through the National Writing Project. And if you're ever interested in working together or doing a PD together or hiring me to do some consulting one-on-one -on -one or for your district, by all means, give me a holler. You can shoot me an email at teachingwritingcoach at gmail.com. And I have a website with a whole bunch of information about my PD offerings and my other comings and goings at www.teachinghowtowrite.com. Be well for now. Happy teaching. Happy